And welcome, my wonderful viewers. This is vlog 118. I am the audiophile barista, and in these vlogs, I talk about audio coffee and other things that keep me busy. I've just been on a holiday, which was very nice. And of course, when you come back from holiday, you immediately dive into what is on the secondhand market because I was still looking for new equipment. And there it was, a preamplifier that I thought, well, I want that one. So I messaged the guy with just one sentence and I said, I want it. So I went there, I picked it up and now it's mine. Let's have a look. And over here it is for those of you who watched my teaser. The reason it was so hard to see it is because this thing is impossible to video or photograph. But this is a Tim the Paravicini design. This is from EAR, Esoteric Audio Research. And this is the EAR 864 preamplifier. Now the reason that I'm very happy with this one is because I had some very good experiences with the gear of Tim the Paravicini. I even met him once. And one of the things that was on my wish list for a very long time is the EAR 834P, which is a phono stage coming in black, but also in this deluxe version where this is really a thick, heavy, chromed front plate. And the 834P is a phono stage. I've wanted it for a very long time, but in Holland, these pieces of equipment of ear are, they don't come often onto the market. So that's why when I saw this one, I thought, well, I need to react right away. And the 834P that I just talked about is actually integrated into this amplifier. So if you look at the top, over here you have the phono stage on this side we have the power and in between is the preamp and all the switches for the different sources now what you have here is a switch for all the different sources which is a phono stage as i just told you cd tuner av aux and XLR, so it has balanced and unbalanced inputs. It has a tape monitor. Now, for those of you who know a little bit about Tim De Parvicini, he is a big tape guy, reel to reel. So, of course, this was on there. There is your wonderful volume knob, and there is a on-off switch and a sweet little orange indicator that the unit is on. It is a preamp, so now I am using the Rega Mira 3 as a power amp. So looking from above, over here you see the power input, over here you see the output from the preamplifier going to the input on the Rega. Going back we have some unbalanced inputs and over there you see the XLR input being connected. The XLR is connected to the PS Audio DAC and the other interlink is connected to the Oppo player. Now normally my preamp, the ITOS that I had before, was up here and that was the first place that I installed the 864 when I just got it, but it introduced a hum through the loudspeakers so in order to test out if it was the amplifier or something else, I placed it over here with short cables and the hum was gone. So somewhere over here, hum is introduced. So I have to figure that out. But also when you have new pieces of equipment, I like to pay attention to cable management. But then of course I had a preamplifier, the ITOS, which had the input for phono on this side and the ear has the input for phono on that side. So I need to reconfigure the way that I have built up my system. 
Now what I want to show you is the way that I go about that. It's a little trick that I've used throughout the years. So what I normally do, I just take some paper, I draw a rough sketch of my rack, one, two, three tiers, plus the top, and from little pieces of paper I cut out my equipment. For example, the Oppo player is over here in my rack system and this says plaat because record player in Dutch is called platenspeler. So normally my record player is over here and the preamp that I had, the Eidos preamp was standing next to it. But the little dot you see over here and the little dot you see over there, this is where the cable from the record player goes out and this is the input for phono on the preamp and with the idols it was on this side making it a much better connection because now this cable from the record player has to go all the way past all the power sockets and all the other cables into this side and that's not really what i want so i make a drawing like this i cut out all my equipment and then i'm just going to see what would be a better solution for example a better solution would be to change these two so now the two connections are next to each other that would be very nice but now the next problem is that my preamp is now the furthest away I can place it from an eventual power amp and that is not what I want especially if hum is introduced because of longer uh, interconnects that is not the best place so maybe a better spot would be to have it over there under it now there's also another reason to put it below but I'll explain that in a, in a bit so when I was doing this I thought well now the preamp is between two sources and the sources are as close as possible to the preamp and I thought well wait a minute I have another source if I place the DA converter over there then the preamp has its three sources as close as possible meaning cable management and shorter cables are possible and then I thought, well, wait a minute, I have a DA converter and I have two pieces of equipment, my CD transport and my blue sounds, which are connected to the DA converter. So in this configuration, these are also as close as possible to the DA converter, meaning shorter interconnects. Of course, I have my power source over there and my music server down here. So when I do this, and I know of course what are the inputs and outputs on all the pieces of equipment, so I can visualize this way what would be the best way to place everything, keeping in mind good cable management and trying to keep all the cables, all the interlinks as short as possible. So that's a little tip, that's how I do it which is much easier than switching all these pieces of equipment in the actual rack. So back to the rack. That is what I am going to do eventually. And as January is almost here, and you know at the beginning of the year, you have seen it in my videos, the beginning of this year. In January, I like to take everything apart, clean everything, put everything back together. So January would be a nice time to try out this configuration. I hope you have seen the teaser so make sure to uh, watch it if you haven't because it gives you a nice uh, idea of what it sounds like. Another problem with this uh, preamp is that it is more or less impossible to get a good view. So as you can see if this Mabel reflects into the chrome it's easy to read what is there. But when I'm sitting with my black trousers over here, you can't see what inputs are there. So one reason I thought when placing the preamp over there and putting it back as much as possible 
to the rear it will give you a big reflection spot so I can more easily see the more you are above it the easier it is to see what is on there so that's why I also want to have it in the rack as far back as possible also I used to have my preamp on top of the rack you know you have these this beautiful front I like it it really is high quality chrome and the previous owner was very neat with it because there is not one little scratch or nick on this chrome plate it is in perfect condition but then it has this black part over there and that is just it does not really fit well together so by placing it in the rack not on top but one tier lower it also takes a little bit away from the optics of the black top now I know that's not interesting or important for sound but I've been an audiophile for some 40 years now and I have to look at this stuff every single day so I also am interested for having it look nice at least look in a way that I think is nice anyways let's go to the rear because one of the other things why I like this amplifier is because it has all the connections that I want. Let's go over here. We have the, the phono input, which is as far away as possible from the power input. That's what I like. Over here you have all the unbalanced inputs and below that are the XLR input. Is the XLR input, there's just one input. And then over here you have your XLR output for a power amplifier and you have two sets of outputs for power amplifiers one is used now but in total one two three so I might even hook up my stacks to one of these or be creative in other ways I like having options on my equipment and now I have all balanced options and all unbalanced options that is another reason for wanting this piece of equipment. Okay, there's a lot more to tell about this preamp and there's a, a multitude of reasons why it had to be that I would walk into a piece of equipment like this. And that is a very interesting story and I decided to make a separate video on that. So for those of you who are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when this other video comes out. So before I finish, let me know if you have any experience with gear of ear. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you have any tips? There are tubes in there. Did you do any tube rolling? Just let me know. But for now, I'm going to finish off the vlog. And today is Friday. It is cloudy, it is cold but it is dry at the moment so everything is fine wishing you a very happy weekend thank you for watching and i'll see you next time